Hi, and welcome to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. I'm Bob Birch. Great to have you along today as uh, we welcome to the podcast Jessica Beckendorf and Sandy Lang from uh, the University of Wisconsin Extension. And we're going to talk about uh, a really great blog post that they did uh, on the Military Families Learning Network blog about their relationship working with veterans uh, in their community and how that came about. And I think it's an it's exciting area uh, for Cooperative Extension to be thinking about this area of community connection and capacity building. So, uh, Jessica, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. And Sandy, good to have you along as well. Thanks for having us. So let's, uh, I would like to give people a little bit of background if they haven't uh, read the blog post. Um, Jessica, how did this? Sorry. We'll do a little editing on the back. I never get phone calls. <laughs> um, so I'd like to give people a little bit of an idea of how this, how this came about if they hadn't uh, read the blog post. So Jessica, can you uh, tell us how this relationship started? How did you end up getting involved in this area of uh, veteran services? Um, well, I wasn't planning to, um, but one day our um, – veteran service officer, uh, was, he was in the middle of planning a, an educational session, uh, something he had kind of been wanting to do for a long time. And um, he decided to, to see, you know, if he could, if there was anything that we could do to help him, because he'd never done anything like that before. And he knew that um, people from these different industries, um, they're all serving veterans, but he knew that they really hadn't been brought together in this way before. Um, so he wanted to, in particular, focus on the criminal justice aspect. Um, he came to me and he said, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, is there anything that you could do to help me promote this or, or something like that? Well, when I looked at what he had done already, I mean, he had the day almost completely filled already with speakers. I thought, well, what, what am I going to be able to add to what, you, <laughs> to what you're doing? And, but as we started talking about it more, um, I realized that this was um, – this was something that we could really add some value to um, in particular because he really was looking for behavior change. And, um, and that's, you know, something that extension uh, often specializes in or, or tries to. Um, and then um, I decided that uh, it would be a really good idea to get Sandy involved because this really involves um, families. It involves um, a lot more than just the veterans. And, and Sandy, you mentioned in the blog post that, uh, you weren't exactly sure what you could bring to this bring to this effort when uh, Jessica first brought you in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. Because um, Jessica is in community development, and I'm in family living. And I thought maybe this was more of a, a strategic planning thing that people in community development normally do. But you know, it, once I got there, I kind of started to see how I could be involved. Um, a lot of extension, a lot of what uh, we are known for an extension is our connections in the community. And I'm very involved in things revolving around families, such as our suicide prevention and mental health coalition. And also um, some of us have been working on some of the substance abuse issues in our community. So it is a very different kind of perspective on veterans health, and, veteran health and who we know, Jessica and I know very different people. But, you know, I think um, us combined, we have this shared mission of thriving, resilient families, and a lot of times program areas don't really overlap in extension, and I think we're seeing how valuable it is for two colleagues in different areas to come together to work with them. So this turned out to be not just a you know collaboration between you guys crossing some some silos maybe in in cooperative extension, but uh, you know, across broader community organizations as well. So how did that come to come to be? How did you find yourself involved in that, Jessica? Um, well, we had the first event that we worked on with our um, veteran service officer was on October 2nd. It, as it turns out, the um, local veterans home, which is about two miles from our office, sent a couple of staff members to this program because they had been thinking about doing their own education um, because they have so many employees. It's like a little city over there. 
Uh, they have so many employees, they really wanted to do some more education and outreach into the community. So they wanted to see what other people were doing and they wanted to meet other people. We sent a couple of people there and um, they noticed that we had helped with getting uh, continuing education units uh, for the speakers and for anyone in attendance that needed CEUs. Um, so they, they gave Jesse a call, who's our uh, veteran service officer, and said, uh, so how did you get those CEUs? Because they knew that was something they wouldn't be able to do on their own. Um, and he sent them to us. Um, they really had no idea that we, they thought because Jesse was a um, part of the county, uh, he was a de department within the county, that we worked directly with him and so um, deeply with him because of that connection. They didn't realize that we were also there to help others in the community, uh, like the Veterans Home. Um, so they initially just wanted CEUs. Um, and in order for, with through UW-Madison, in order for us to provide those CD CEUs, we need to be pretty intricately involved in the educational programming also. Um, so we actually have another blog post coming out tomorrow, which will be the second half of the story, where we describe a little bit about how it, it felt a little bit like we had to interject ourselves into, um, into the process for the second event that we worked on. Um, but how it really happened was um, this little connection where they needed a CEU, CEUs, and um, they thought that we could just help provide them with that. And then when they realized that we could actually help them with a lot more, um, it really started to blossom very quickly. What kind of organizations, you talked about the first meeting, Sandy, what kind of organizations were at that first summit? I mean, besides the county and, and extension and, and it sounds like the Veterans Home, were there others in the community involved in that? Right. Well, I think we had a lot of people from Health and Human Services, like a large portion of that. And in our first summit, we didn't have a lot of law enforcement, which was really interesting because I think um, Jesse, that was his target. He really wanted law enforcement to be involved. We had had lots of some coalition members. It was, a, it was a pretty diverse mix. And that was kind of similar to our second one that we eventually did. But um, the first one was mostly health and human services. Um, some people came without our organization. Some people came for professional, you know, just, just for um, personal reasons. They just wanted to be in a room of people who understood. And, yeah. It, it, you included an infographic in the blog post that showed that, you know, your county does have a, a higher than average percentage of, of veterans in your county. Uh, and, um, you know, I honestly, I don't even know if our county has a veteran services officer like your county does. Is this something in your county, Sandy, that uh, has been sort of a particular issue and highlighted in some way that uh, of, of veteran services? Well, like not, so it's actually interesting because so every time, every few or so years, what we do is have like a visioning session, you know, like, oh, let's talk about all the issues in the community. And I think it has always been an issue, but the thing is that nobody invited someone from the Veterans, Veterans Home to these sessions because for the past, I don't know how many visioning sessions, when we talk about families, health and human services comes and people who maybe we already knew or worked with, we invited them, but I don't think anyone invited the veterans or even thought of them to them to invite. So I think it's always been an issue, but maybe they didn't have a chance to be heard. So this was a really nice opportunity because once you look at the statistics, once you look at the numbers, you're like, wow, how do we um, not have this connection before? Jessica, at that first summit, or maybe even at the second summit, how uh, you, know, you bring a lot of different organizations to the table. They think they all have their own roles. Did you see any sort of friction based around territory, or you know, no, that's our role, and in those kinds of things? No, it was it was really interesting. Actually, um, we saw a lot of people learning about what others are doing. We saw a lot of people connecting and even talking about potential collaborations we saw at both summits. Um, one comment in particular that really sticks with me is um, somebody at the end of the first summit said, um, I didn't realize that there were other people out there that cared. Um, so they really felt a connection. They were feeling a little isolated in the work that they did. They were feeling a connection to others that cared. Um, 
so no, I didn't see any of that. I saw, I saw people hungry for more collaboration and being able to get together and communicate with each other more. Same. You're nodding, Sandy. That was your experience. <laughs> I know you guys can't see me nodding, but yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we, well, Packet County isn't like huge or anything, but it's amazing how many things, um, you know, we, I don't know about, or even people who, who serve just veterans don't know about. And it was really exciting to see that 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 time in between that networking that happened even when there wasn't formalized education going on when we had a discussion when during little breaks and people were meeting each other for the first time when they are serving the same audience. Uh, Sandy mentioned you know formalized education and I think uh, maybe not so much for you Jessica you know being in your community development role but uh, for a lot of people in extension that's sort of our experience working in our communities is delivering material, de delivering information and programming. Um, how has Cooperative Extension's role in, in this effort sort of uh, been different? Mm. Yeah, it can be kind of difficult to talk about your impact in your work when you're not doing the formal teaching, right? When you're not the subject matter expert, um, when you didn't even have anything to do with bringing in any of the speakers. So for instance, in both cases, Jesse and then Amber at the veterans home um, took care of pulling together the speakers because they had those contacts. Um, the value that we were able to provide was in outcomes discussions. So initially it was, well, I, I just want to, you know, I want to have an educational um, event because I think some people need to, I need, there are some people out there that need to learn a few things about how to work with veterans. Um, and, and then we just, it felt like we were often kind of plowing forward very, very quickly, which is actually something I also appreciate because I like to get things done quickly. So, <laughs> um, but so the value we're able to provide is in um, kind of stopping and thinking here and there about what do we really want to get out of it and is the way we're, we're planning this event um, actually going to get us there? Um, that's one of the things, and that's one of the reasons why the discussion um, came up, uh, just having a discussion session came up. And then the other thing we were able to provide, um, I'm not sure that they were planning on doing very much for evaluation. It's It's possible, but um, we were able to provide the evaluation design. So taking the outcomes that we had discussed we wanted to have, putting it into an evaluation format, and administering that as well. Um, those two things to our partners were really huge. Um, you saw the letter that was on the blog that we got from Jesse when we just asked him for a simple quote. Um, and, and Amber, we just had a meeting uh, about over lunch, we just had a meeting today over lunch with Amber and Jesse about um, our next steps and what we're gonna what we're gonna be doing. And, and Amber is really excited for us to get moving, just like her. Oh, you wouldn't have seen this quote yet, but you'll see it in in tomorrow's blog post. Um, Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the meeting, the first summit um, you mentioned in the blog post, uh, sort of did take on a different kind of structure instead of having. Uh, sort of speakers and and that kind of formal education uh, set up that it was more about engaging people in a conversation. Uh, Sandy, how do you think that changed how the project moved forward? What if what if you had gone with the original plan? Yeah, it was, it's both, and I think the summit just kind of highlights what transformational education looks like. It's not just content; it's also the process because. There's a lot of content, and at first, I think that's where the focus was. Let's have all these speakers, and that's vital. You know, um, I wouldn't, I didn't know any of those people that they did, and process it combined with um, content is how you have high impact programs. And because we all know a lot of things, like I know a lot of things, but I don't necessarily do it. Some, sometimes I speed, sometimes I eat unhealthily. We, we, content in its own doesn't lead to action. So when we brought in the discussion questions, that helped them um, think about it and to think about next steps because, you know, sometimes when during, when you have speaker after speaker after speaker, it gets kind of tiring and maybe people zone out. But when we have that 
um, discussion piece of it, it can it engages people. People feel more invested, and it, when they feel heard, it, it gives them some ownership. Like this is our community kind of project, and it gives them. Um, I think people become a little more invested when they have an active role in thinking about what happens next. Yeah, I I was really hoping um, that the conversation piece of the program would be empowering. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of people there who aren't necessarily, you know, the boss where they work. And we wanted them to figure out what they could do without additional resources or authority. Um, and by doing that, hopefully get some incremental um, behavior change. Let's talk a little bit about um, sort of the extension side of this. Uh, I'm always curious when I talk to people who are doing things innovative and, and differently in extension, um, sort of what made that possible. Um, and so, Jessica, since you had the first meeting with, with Jesse, um, why do you think this evolved the way it did? Was it, was it something about how you approached it? Uh, something about how he approached it? it uh, just happenstance or, you know, why didn't this just turn into, well, here, I'll, I'll help you, you know, get some promotion for your meeting and then bye. Uh, see <laughs> yeah. you next time you need help. Um, for me, it was the really Jesse's passion about what he was doing. Um, on top of that, I have uh, personal experiences with, um, I come from a long line of, of veterans in my family. And um, so I really kind of grabbed on to that passion and, um, and it kind of became mine too, um, or one of, one of mine. And so seeing, seeing him so excited and seeing him uh, build something really unique that has not been done at least in our county before um really excited me and made me want to um help him make it the best that it could be um i generally won't take something on that i can't put um a lot of effort into uh, sometimes that's not so good for me because i end up with with more than i can um more than i can really do um but so far, I haven't dropped any balls, so I'm still still doing pretty good there. Um, but this is something that uh, I really started to feel passionate about myself because of the passion oozing from Jesse. <laughs> I had to agree with that. It's really hard to explain if you weren't there, but it's just that no one usually it's extension out reaching out to people going hi how can we help you but you know he came to us and that kind of said something and you know extension is all about being relevant and timely and i mean it's like he um came in and he had a lot to say he knew a lot about the community and i think i was kind of surprised that in the past i don't know how many years well, PACA has had extension. I don't know. Sorry. So hopefully it won't be a quiz, but I don't think we have any history working with veterans in any of our program area, areas. And it is just such a large percentage. And, 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 yeah, so I just wanted to maybe open that kind of door for future collaboration. Yeah, if I could add, working, working with Jesse was really easy also. We didn't know that in the beginning. In fact, in the very beginning, right, Sandy? Yeah. <laughs> You came into my office and because I'm like, oh, this sounds kind of more like a family living thing. Would you like to take the lead on, on the project? <laughs> and as it turns out, we, we both just kind of equally, really, Jesse was the lead, but we just kind yeah. of equally, for our part, um, split 50-50. But mm -hmm. um, this was something that it was sort of a right place, right time. Mm -hmm. And the passion was there that was really exciting. I mean, when someone's that excited about something, you really want to do everything you can to help them. Yeah, and it's also a nice, one more thing, it is also nice to work with Jessica because we have, we're trained differently. We have different connections, and um, I think there should be more collaboration between Extension colleagues, so it's not just internally and externally. We all bring something in a little different. Mm -hmm. 
One of the things that you guys brought up in the blog post was that you're both relatively new and I guess an extension relatively new could mean, you know, you've only been on the job 10 or 12 years. Um, <laughs> that's an extension joke. Um, <laughs> we're in, in the county, we're, we're both relatively new. Um, so Sandy, have, had you worked in, have you worked in extension before in a different county or? Um, no, I, I, no. <laughs> so for me, I, this is really new. This is like my first real job with real insurance. So I grew up in Ohio. So um, Wisconsin is still kind of new for me. So this was a, Opaka County is kind of nice in that in smart communities, you don't have like a ton of nonprofits. You don't have like a ton of other organizations offering services. So it's a nice place where we can really add value to our community. And there's a good chance for creativity in mm -hmm. small communities also, because mm -hmm. um, there aren't already, like you were saying, a lot of other people doing very similar right. work. So. so Jessica, do you think this had, do you think this experience was different because, um, and I know it's hard for you to guess this because you don't, you don't know what it, is like to be have been an extension for 20 years um, <laughs> or done much of anything. It's been at, about three for, for me. Years. Yeah. Um, but do you think it's, it, it's different because of, I think you, you guys have alluded to, it's probably different because it was a, a small community. It was a different experience, but was it different because of um, how new you both are to extension work? Hmm. That we weren't maybe, um, Kind of already set like I didn't even have a, a plan of work yet um, that we didn't mm -hmm. already have kind of a set um, agenda things that we did all the time you know yeah I'd say potentially I, yeah uh, I can see that because I know that ex well I think in my my pre my predecessors before there was very set programming we were kind of known for like food preservation and parenting classes. And we kind of got stuck into, this is what we are known for. But um, when, you know, coming in new, I didn't really have like a, this is what I'm going to do. Because like, like Jessica, I was still working on my plan of work. I was still trying to understand the needs of the county. And I don't really want to continue programming just because that's always how it has been done. So um, I came into a job very open-minded. Um, really excited to meet new community partners. And I don't know, I just see my position as flexible because needs change and um, I want to be responsive to what the community needs. When Jesse first brought this up to me, I had just completed a couple months before my, my initial needs assessment that you do when you start your position. And in all of the dozens of people I talked to one-on-one -on -one, and then there was up to a hundred people that answered a couple of questions for me uh, at different meetings and during group discussions not one person brought up um, that mm -hmm. that veterans um, had some pretty big needs in this in this community um, and I think that this was kind of like a big um, kind of obvious smack in the face that there's a really big need in the community and not just the veterans, but the people who serve the veterans. Um, and family in, members of veterans too. Family members, yeah. right. So to me, this, this was something that was hugely missing from my needs assessment. And I think I would recommend that any extension person who does needs assessments or who's constantly at least visit, if you've got a county veteran service officer, or if you've got, even if it's uh, out, outside of your county, if there's a veteran's home somewhere nearby in the vicinity, talk to them about the needs of veterans. Um, because I think that um, it's a hugely underserved population. That's what I've been learning anyway. Ditto. <laughs> uh, Jessica, you mentioned, you mentioned impact and showing impact uh, and how this might have been different. Have you had an opportunity to talk to supervisors, administrators about this and how, what has the, if so, what has the reception been um, and has it been any different than, uh, you know, a program where you might be taking the lead in rather than playing a supporting role? We presented this at a regional conference uh, for our region of Wisconsin, and it was extremely well received by the people who attended. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we had anyone from an administration in there, though. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've been inviting, um, I've been sharing the link to the blog and um, I shared this link out with uh, a number of people, including administration. In fact, one of our administrators um, said he was going to attend, so it's too bad it's not live. I'll send him the link then for, for the recording. But um, So I haven't really had much of a response from administration yet, but they're only just now becoming aware because we only just started sharing in March about what we're doing because we were still working on, you know, um, the evaluation and um, results and things like that. So, um, but from the people who attended our session and from all of the people who have been commenting on my Google Plus posts in our different communities, um, that reception has been really great. Um, so we're going to continue to share. Um, we had a, a couple people that attended that um, mentioned that attended our session at our, the conference we shared at um, that mentioned that they were really um, they had never really thought about working with our, their veteran service officer. And one of them said that he would maybe talk to um, his just to find out what's going on in the county. So, but that's been the, that's been the impact so far, I guess, on, on that end. Sandy, where is this going from here? Um, everybody's going to, uh, we'll share the, the link to the, to both blog posts, uh, the, the current one and the one that's, that's coming up tomorrow. Uh, in our show notes, and and so everyone will read about the two meetings anyway. But what, how do you see this progressing in the future? That's a timely question. <laughs> like about like an hour or so ago, Jessica and I just had like a meeting with um, both of them. Um, so Amber and Jesse, um, they each had their own separate summit, and now we are kind of draw, you know, combining it. And because I mean, it's all kind of related. So we actually had discussion um, over the results because. Um, so we, today we just, whoops, sorry. So today we basically just went over what the second summit results were to think about new directions. And um, one of the things we're going to do is follow up with the participants saying, oh, um, by the way, you attended this um, summit. Here is kind of um, the, some of the results that we found. We're going to have like, a, like an infographic, short and sweet, thing for for them to see and also a chance for them to um you know decide on um, what they also want to have in the future for example um what types of um programming they are interested in, in the future also what have they done since uh, since the um summit because we did a lot of training on um like how to speak to someone who is struggling and how to we also offer it on resources so one of the things we want to do is follow up follow up on past stuff as well as what they intend to do and also what they're interested in so the future is still we uh, it's still kind of you know we don't have it it's not like perfect or anything we are still in the planning process and um it takes a little time you know but we want to be intentional in our efforts and how we decide um, how to invest um, our time. And I think so, where we can, oh, sorry. You know, so I was gonna say, like, I don't know if Jessica has anything to add, so. I was going to say that um, in, I think where we can add some value in the future going forward is that um, now we are not kind of coming in in the middle of someone else's pl planning process, which happened basically for both. I mean, Jesse called us fairly close to the beginning. And I think Amber was kind of more in the middle of her planning process. Um, now we are on the front end of this. And I think we can really add some value there with outcomes planning and, um, and that kind of thinking. Um, so I'm looking forward to um, talking about talking to them about, um, how we might plan our future events. We also would like to, uh, this was brought up again today in our meeting, that we would like to bring in more for the families. So doing more yeah. more educational or just programming, just programming for the families. So. Right, because I think what, well, for the second summit, we decided to um, ask people what their relationship was with someone who, if they had a relationship with someone who's a veteran, because you can, some people came for themselves, some people came for a family member, or some people came because they work with veterans, and we just wanted to get a better capture, like, who is, who is our audience, and what is their story, what is their history, so that we can kind of tailor things to um, meet their needs. And I think it's like 25% like or something. Oh, well, actually I have it in front of me. Like a large percentage for like 
um, yeah, like uh, almost one third of our per- our participants were a child of a veteran, but you know we didn't we've never really um, had any specific programming or any speakers talk about that. So it's something just food for thought in the future. Sandy, is there is there one thing from this experience that you'll take away and potentially use in the future on other projects or the way that you do your work? Um, and the way I do my work, just like not being afraid to try something new. Um, this was my first collaboration with someone outside of family living. And I don't think there's a ton of that right now. Um, so just um, cross-programming and... Um, just being flexible because this also wasn't in my plan of work, but, um, you know, it just became, it became a need and that has never been tapped in before. And like Jessica mentioned before, um, you know, maybe the way in the future that I do my needs assessment, you know, um, when I, when, at least when I came on board, what we were told is like, oh, talk to this key stakeholders in the community. And it kind of gave you a list of people who um, have worked with extension in the past and you just go around but, you know, I think it's like, you know, it's not that easy. You don't, I mean, um, what is, you don't always hear about the needs because definitely um, veterans have a need and and they, they just weren't, just happen not to ever be invited to um, speak about it. So just um, being open and flexible and yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought that I was very, when I did my needs assessment, I thought I was very inclusive. And this really made me think about moving forward. It, it's, it's going to make me think more about um, who am I not hearing. Right. Um, and it's hard to identify when you, when you don't know. And that when you don't could think. be an extension paper because yeah. I'm not sure how your program area does needs assessment, but we kind of have a thing like, oh, talk to, you know, these people, talk to other family living people. But what about those who aren't being heard? You know, what if, how do we reach out to them? How do we, how do we know what you don't know? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, Sandy Lang and Jessica Beckendorf are uh, work with University of Wisconsin Extension in Wapaka County, and uh, they've been working with their veterans' uh, services in their county. And you can read all about it and a couple of great blog posts. I'm going to assume the next one's great, guys. I guess yep. like, <laughs> one great one, and and I, I count on you guys. This tomorrow's is going to be great too. Uh, you can find that at blogs.extension.org/slash/military/families and just look for Friday Field Notes uh, there. Thanks, you guys, so much for joining us. This has been a great conversation. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, this has been the Working Differently in Extension podcast. Hit us up on Twitter. It's at WDNEXT. Love to hear from you there. You can find us on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash working differently. And the show notes are at bobbirch.com. Thanks again for joining us. We'll talk to you soon.